Hello everyone. Today I'm here to talk to you about my top five favorite films of 2022. Now I've noticed that every time I have uh, a TV series or a movie that is my most anticipated, um, it ends up not being my most uh, most anticipated. Sometimes, sometimes like the thing that I'm not most hyped about ends up being the thing I loved the most about what came out that year. Uh, this this past 2022, there was a lot of surprises. Definitely a lot of surprises. And I was thinking, should I do a top 20, top 15, top 10? And that's too much. That's too much. I don't have time for that. <laughs> so I'm just going to stick to the films that are few and really good that i thought were really good i think five is just a really good easy quick number and i could bust these out for you guys and let you know what my thoughts are so here we go these are my top five uh favorite films of 2022 number five would have to be the northman this one was really really good really dark but just just a damn good story a very simple story and i i really enjoyed this i saw the trailers and i remember thinking like that looks pretty good and then i watched the movie and it was it was more than pretty good it was really really good uh scar alexander skarsgård anya taylor joy the the main baddie nicole kidman they all did a fantastic fantastic job portraying these characters i like the dirty grimy cinematography i like i just like the brutality of it i like the edginess and there's there's a lot of edginess in this um it's just a really good simple story with a lot of good mythological elements it was really good i really enjoyed it avatar the way of water now I remember when the first film came out, I thought it was okay. I don't remember much of it because I've only seen it like once and I never saw it again. And then I noticed like a lot of hype for it. And I was like, what? Why are people so crazy over it? It's not, it's okay, but it's not the second coming of Jesus. So I was like, well, whatever, I don't care. And then, um, the part two was announced and I felt like it was being in development for a long, long time. And then it finally came out with a trailer. And I remember seeing a trailer, I was like, about time. They took forever to make this. And I, but I, I was impressed with the visuals in the trailer, but I was like, I'm still not really hyped for this. And then I saw the movie and it blew me away. It blew me away and I finally understood the hype. Because now, after seeing that second film, I am a fan now. Now I care. And now I really look forward to see what they do in the next one. And when I saw uh, The Way of Water, I immediately went to go see the first one. And then I had a newfound appreciation of the first one. Um, I really liked Michelle Rodriguez's character in that first one. But in The Way of Water, I liked, obviously, the visuals. Um, Kate Winslet, she did a phenomenal, phenomenal job. I didn't even know that was her. I thought it was a, a different woman. But that was her. That, that surprised me. Um, Sam Worthington, Zoe Saldana, the the actors that played the kids. Um, what's that? Oh my goodness, what's her name? The old lady uh, that plays that young. She's old. She's an older actress, but she plays like a 14-year-old blue alien. Sigourney Weaver? Is that her? Sigourney Weaver? I'm gonna. I feel like it's Sigourney Weaver. She did a great, great job because that's true acting when, you know, you're playing something different because that character she played, she's not, you know, because Sigourney Weaver is not young. She's not blue. She's not alien, but she played it really well. Um, the, the different animals getting killed. That was very dramatic. Uh, the, uh, the, the action, the spectacle. It's a great movie. It's an epic movie. It's an epic movie. And I see the hype. Um... I want to try to see it again in theaters as soon as I can before it's out because that that is an experience. It is an experience and lots and lots of people need to go see it. So my number four is Avatar 
the way of water. Top Gun Maverick. This is definitely my number three. This is another one that surprised me. I've never seen, the, to this day, I've never seen the first movie, but I get the point of it. I, I, I saw like a recap and I, I understand the gist of it. Um, I, I couldn't go back to see it because it's just too dated. I might watch it again if they make a third one to, you know, to celebrate. But anyway, uh, the only reason I saw this movie, <laughs> the only reason I went to go see it was because I saw that Mission Impossible Reckoning teaser for that first, for part one. And I was like, bro, that looks so awesome. I need to see that movie now. And this was coming out. So I was like, okay, it's the next best thing. And I saw it and I loved it. I absolutely, this was like, this, <laughs> this movie felt very, um, not that it's a, it's not a bad thing, but it just felt very, like it's a movie for conservatives. America, like, yeah, America flag, uh, US armed forces, Navy, whatever. And, but it, it was, it's, it's a very good American movie, I feel like. It's a very good American uh, red blood in your veins uh, movie. Uh, Miles Teller uh, was, was pretty good, but Tom Cruise, he was amazing, as well as uh, Glenn Powell, too. I want him to be Green Lantern, by the way. Glenn Powell for Green Lantern. Um, this is another movie where the visuals the uh the airplane scenes they really had me gasping for air like whenever they would go up and they would you know lose their breath a bit i would feel that too i would feel it i would feel it in the theater like i couldn't breathe and it was tense and i didn't think that they were gonna make it at some point and they some of them you know didn't not to give away spoilers but the scene between tom cruise and val kilmer that was emotional and i didn't even see the first one that movie, that scene made me cry a little bit. I'm not gonna lie. On the inside, on the inside. Um, there was another movie on this list that made me cry, but I'll get to that. But this was this was great. This was a, a great film. You know, I don't really consider myself uh, a Tom Cruise fan, but this movie definitely made me one. You know, I, it definitely made me one, and I look forward to all of his uh, future projects now after seeing this movie so top gun maverick is my number three and yeah i hope that more people make movies like this because this is why we go to the theater very good very good sir matt reeves is the batman for 2022 oh boy man I, I have so much to say about this, but I'm going to try to condense it. I'm going to try to condense it. I really wanted Ben Affleck's Batman movie with Destro. I really, really, really wanted that film. Didn't happen. Heartbroken. Matt Reeves comes in, takes over, scratches everything, kind of like how James Gunn is doing, and wants to put his own thing in there. And I, I, I was I was being a crybaby about it. And I kind of still am to some extent, but I can't deny the quality of the film. But when he did that, I was like, oh my God, it's just another, it's basically like a Nolan movie. What is this? Oh my God, serial killer. You know, I was just going in, I was just expecting another typical Nolan-esque uh, Batman movie. Um, like, we've already done that already. I want to... I wanted to get back to the fantastical. I want Batman to face Deathstroke, some cool shit, you know? But I saw the movie and it was extremely different from any other Batman movie that has ever been, at least in live action form. And it was very slower paced um, and very methodical and very um, dark. Also stylish too. It's very stylish. The cinematography is beautiful. The sound is great. It's so goddamn gorgeous. And you know, I, I'm watching this movie, and I'm like, wow, this is this feels intellectual. <laughs> like I feel like I'm thinking, you know, because usually Batman movies, they're they're basic. Ultimately, no matter what great actors you have in there, um. I know Heath Ledger won like an Oscar for it, but they're popcorn movies, you know, they're popcorn movies, you know, you just watch a couple explosions, watch Batman beat some people up, and then that's it, you know, and then the, the villain, of course, comes in, steals the show a bit, and then 
yeah, that's pretty much pretty much it. But that's not. I love that. That's what I love about those Batman movies. But this one really uh, challenge challenges your patience a little bit, and it takes its time. And I actually really appreciated that. So I went in thinking, oh my goodness, this is just another Batman movie. To thinking, oh, I'm kind of disappointed that it's not just another Batman movie. This is why I like Batman. To appreciating, oh, this is a Batman movie that I've never even seen before on the big screen. So I like it. So I had so many mixed emotions and expectations being backflipped and subverted. And uh, it's definitely, it's one of my favorite Batman movies. Um... I prefer Ben Affleck, but he's a strong number two. He's a strong number two. And it took me a long time to come to terms with that. Because, like, Michael Keaton, Batman was the one I grew up with, and Christian Bale came in. And then Ben Affleck, in my opinion, blew them out the water. And then I was kind of, like, sat on, like, this is my Batman. No one else is going to top it. And while I don't think Pattinson tops Ben Affleck, he's, his Batman is... is, is I would say second best to everyone else, to be honest. Um, my, although Michael Keaton is still good. Like, if someone said Michael Keaton is better than Robert Pattinson, I won't argue with them. You understand? Like, I'm not going to refute that. But Pattinson was Batman for, like, 90% of the movie. And I really... I, he is the character. He really embodied the character really, really well. Better than a majority of the other actors ever have. And the the villain um riddler he did a he did a great job too um i like the route that they took by making him like a zodiac type killer um catwoman i feel like she wasn't catwoman i just felt like that was selena kyle but that's probably the point of it because everyone is, is in their beginnings and hopefully eventually she truly becomes catwoman but she wasn't catwoman to me in this movie she was just <clears throat> sorry Sorry, excuse me. She was just uh, Selena Kyle. Colin Farrell, he obviously, he did a, a good job. Um, I'm very much looking forward to his um, HBO Max series. Um, and I like uh, Barry Keoghan's cameo. A lot of people complain about it. Like, this didn't need to be in the movie. I'm kind of glad it did. It gives you... It gives you a little something extra to, to go home with. Like, it's just it just makes the movie more enjoyable. I honestly... I mean, obviously, it still would have been a good movie without that scene, right? But I think... I still think it made it better. It made it better. So I'm really glad um, Matt Reeves put Joker in there. I just want them to follow up with that. He doesn't have to be the main villain. He could be a supporting side villain or character. I just want him to have a bigger role, you know? And with Riddler, too. I don't want just Joker coming in like we always see joker i want to see him with a partner this time that's not harley quinn you feel me i want him and riddler to do something um i could talk about this movie for for ages because it, 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 it makes you think and it's like it really it makes me put a mirror in my in front of my face and ask what's it like to be what is it like to be a comic book fan and a movie fan you know um it, it was phenomenal it's phenomenal and I heard it got nominated for some awards. It deserves it. It deserves it. And you have to give credit what credit is due. So, even though Ben Affleck is my favorite Batman, I gotta say, and I gotta, I gotta keep putting that out there. I'm sorry if that's annoying, but I gotta keep putting that out there. But the Batman is a masterpiece. The cinematography, the direction, the acting, the sounds, the visual effects, everything is... is damn near perfect i would say so it, it is a masterpiece and i am looking forward to the sequel i didn't want i didn't want to admit it i didn't want to admit it for a while but when i mull it over and i think about it i'm like yeah they did do this no other batman movie was able to do this uh yeah they did do that so i was like okay no no i i, I gotta give it the w the batman is a masterpiece and that's why it is my number two favorite film of 2022 and my number one is without a doubt everything everywhere all at once i cried during this movie i was on a date while watching this movie in the theater and i cried in front of her 
You know how embarrassing that is? She held my hand. She held my hand and stuff like that. It was, but it, it was, it was too powerful. Like I couldn't hold it back. I was, I was crying like a bitch. But this movie has just a very valuable lesson. There's a lot of visual elements in it. Music's good. Acting's phenomenal. But you know, the uh, the lessons that it teaches you the. The, the the messages not lessons the messages of it is is very powerful it's very powerful and the last like 30 minutes or whatever that that movie the last 30 minutes of that movie really it'll change you it'll it'll make you see things a little differently just a little bit right. but I, 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 there's not too much I can say about this movie except if you haven't seen it, you need to go watch that shit right now. You need to see it right now. Because this movie is is the true masterpiece. And I think this is another one where I think more people should make films like this. Um, I don't, I don't want to spoil it. I, I want to talk about it, but it's like one of those things I don't want to spoil it in case you haven't seen it. I just want to tell you to go watch it right now because it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful movie, beautiful, beautiful movie, and this is getting a bunch of no Oscar nominations as well. So, yeah, everything, everywhere, all at once is my number one, and I love it. And you need to see it so you can love it too. Ah, <sighs> that's my list, guys. That's all. Um, thank you for watching, and I will see you all next time. Oh, yeah. Bro, if you got sketches on, get out my face, bro. Oh, bro.